Well, let's take a look at some of that polling now. Republicans haven't won a presidential election in the state of New Hampshire since Y2K, but the New Hampshire Journal poll shows that Trump may be positioned to take home the state's four electoral votes and that his quest was actually boosted by the Democratic nominee switch-up that just took place. But also have a look at this poll. Trump is ahead of Kamala 50% to 41 without leaners. But with leaners, Trump at 53%, Harris 47 So, Josh, Trump's still ahead. How do you read these numbers? Yeah, look, I, you know, I think Donald Trump and J.D. Vance, as of right now, are in good shape to be sworn in in January 2025 as president and vice president of the United States. I, I think Democrats were between a rock and a hard place. I mean, they were in an utter disaster of their very own making. Again, they only have themselves to blame. They are the ones who have basically zipped their mouths and had this ridiculous cover-up for the past few years there. But as it, you know, as it pertains to trying to limp across the finish line with Joe Biden or going with the horrifically unpopular Kamala Harris, there, there was not a particularly appealing option. You know, in theory, the slightly more appealing option would be to leapfrog both of them and go for Michelle Obama. But she, but she apparently has no interest. And I have to be honest with you, I don't blame her at all. I mean, they have a very cozy life. The Obamas, they spend time up in Martha's Vineyard. They really control a lot of the strings. They're kind of puppeteers as it is, calling a lot of the shots without the need to get any accountability for the pushback. So between Harris and Biden, it's basically a loser's bet either way. The question that I have is who is going to be her running mate? Because this is kind of the equivalent of during the Battle of Midway during World War II of hopping on board to be the passenger on a kamikaze plane. I mean, this thing is going to crash and burn. It's a suicide mission. Who is she going to get to kind of waste his or her political talents on a failed vice presidential run? I have no idea, honestly. No, I guess, uh, well, we, we may find out soon. But, look, let's move to the Secret Service now. The director, Kimberly Cheadle, how that woman uh, is still in a job is absolutely beyond me. But, look, the head of the agency, she's appeared at a heated committee hearing into what happened in Pennsylvania a couple of weeks ago now where Donald Trump was shot. And true to form, she still won't answer key questions about the catastrophic failings of the agency on that day. Director Cheadle, in your leadership, your agency got outsmarted and outmaneuvered by a 20-year-old. How can we have any confidence that you could stop a trained professionals from a nefarious nation state? Those are absolutely questions that we need to have I know they're questions. To. Josh, what a ridiculous answer. This woman is in complete denial. How hopeless is she? You know, like you, I, I, I am just absolutely astounded that here we are almost a week and a half after the former president, Donald Trump, almost had his head blown off in front of the entire world. Here we are, and this woman still has a job. You know, once upon a time in America and in Western nations more generally, there was such thing as a sense of shame, as, as a sense of, of, of self-awareness, whereby if you, are a, if you are a public official and something like this happens under your watch, you resign. You know, you have enough sense of dignity and self-respect to get the heck out of there. You know, in fact, I actually saw a headline maybe like two or three months ago out of Israel, and their IDF commander who was responsible for protecting the Gaza communities actually resigned about three months ago. And the quote that he gave, it's a very tragic quote, he said, I have failed in my life mission because he failed to protect those communities after the Hamas Holocaust of October 7, 2023. Ditto Kimberly Cheadle. You failed. Your, your, your vocational mission has been an utter and complete failure because as Secret Service Director, you really have one job above all, and that is to keep the President of the United States and their family safe and secure. This is ridiculous. And you know what? But there actually is a silver lining here before, before I finish. There's actually a very nice silver lining, which is the fact that after this outrageous hearing— which many people are saying here in America was the single worst congressional hearing they have ever seen from a witness ever. The silver lining is that in the aftermath of this, you have the chairman, Jim Comer, the Republican of, of Kentucky, who has written a joint letter with the ranking member of the Democrat, Jimmy Raskin in Maryland, where they jointly are calling on Kimberly Cheadle to resign because she has disgraced herself. So if you get that kind of bipartisan unity these days in Washington, you know you probably messed up. Absolutely. Well, I want to show you this next exchange, Josh, because this actually warrants her being fired on the spot. Have a listen to this. So were you also aware there was a credible threat uh, President Trump was facing? He was facing a heightened security threat due, a, due a, to a foreign adversary? Yes. My question is, if he'd been the sitting president, would he have had the same security he had on July 13th or would have been beefed up? There is a difference between the sitting so he president. Did. So your answer is he didn't. 
And we know, uh, she, well, she claimed, of course, that it was due to a sloped roof for the catastrophic failings of the Secret Service. And uh, this was her trying to answer questions about it. Do you remember in an ABC interview you did that you didn't have people on the roof of the AGR building because you were worried about safety because of the slope? I recall that statement. Okay. Does the Secret Service have written policy you can share with us about slope roofs? No. Okay. So why'd you act like there was one? But the problem is, Director, you put your counter snipers on a 312 roof, which is steeper than the 112. And by the way, the 112 is ADA compliant. You can build a, a ramp for a wheelchair. Josh, I don't know if she knows uh, the difference between a sloped roof and a non-sloped roof, but the fact that she admitted that, that she knew of the threat to Trump's life and still did nothing about it. Yeah, you know, it's actually e e even worse than that. And, and that was actually a very good interrogation by Congressman Fallon of Texas, who's somewhat of a rising star in the party, I think. But, you know, it's actually even worse than this, frankly, because it actually just came out this past weekend that Kimberly Cheadle and the Secret Service actually lied to the American people. So in the first 24 to 36 hours after the, the horrific near assassination that, of course, tragically did result in, in the death of the innocent civilian bystander, Corey Comparatore, they actually denied, that is, the Secret Service, in the first 24 to 36 hours after that, they denied that they, in turn, had denied requests for additional security from the Trump campaign. Well, it turns out that they were lying, because we just learned this weekend that, in fact, they did. In fact, the Secret Service has, over the past 18 to 24 months, denied requests for additional security from the Donald J. Trump for President campaign. If that bullet had actually gone a millimeter or two the other direction, you could make a very plausible argument that that would be blood on the hands of Kimberly Cheadle. At a bare minimum, Corey Comparatore, may his memory be a blessing, his blood certainly, I think, is on the hands of at least a little bit of the United States Secret Service there. This whole thing is an abomination. America looks like a laughing stock on the world stage because of it. And this woman needs to get the heck out of her job. Well, here is Kimberly Cheadle being accused of perjury. When you were asked earlier from Rep. Kristen Morthy about whether or not Secret Service was aware of a threat, you had said no, they were unaware of a threat. And yet, according to communications, again, from law enforcement that were in some of these group chats, they actually had reported that Secret Service was made aware of a threat at around 5.59 p.m. Can you please tell me if you have knowledge of that at all? Again, I think we're conflating the, the difference between the term threat and suspicious. Chairman, in my opinion, according to some of the testimony today, I feel that you have perjured yourself in some instances. And so I'm going to ask for a full review of the transcripts by staff. And if you find that to be the case, I do ask that you bring perjury charges against the director. I mean, it's a complete mess. And Josh, it comes as a report into the January 6 attack at the Capitol uh, could drop any moment. Uh, what do you think we could expect from that and, and the role of the Secret Service? Well, look, we're going to have to see here. I mean, the Department of Homeland Security is is run, of course, by Alejandro Mayorkas. I mean, who was a far left nut job. He recently became the first cabinet official to be impeached in about a century and a half since the 1870s, if I have the date correctly there. So, you know, I have no doubt that he is going to exculpate the, the, the deep state. He's going to exculpate probably the CIA, the FBI, Secret Service. He's probably going to just blame those crazy far-right MAGA kooks. I mean, it'll, it'll be littered with the rhetoric and the nomenclature and the phraseology of insurrection and all these crazy words that have no meaning because they've totally deprived them of meaning via overuse. So I'm not exactly getting my hopes up for this report from this particular administration. But, you know, look, I mean, I mean, good for Congresswoman Anna Polina Luna, though, in that particular clip, another rising star in the party. She's right here in Florida in my particular state. These are the kind of tough interrogations we need. But again, we have to see what's going to happen with Kimberly Cheadle, because if she still has a job by this time next week, then I just toss my hands up. I don't even know what to make of that at that point. Oh, I, neither do I. It's just absolutely bizarre. Josh Hammer, great to speak with you as always. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you so much.